Now, increasingly, digital connectivity is touted as one of the key ingredients inspiring Africa's growth. But in which ways can this be done? And how can corporates achieve the transformation of livelihoods through digital connectivity? We spoke to Sanda Ojiambo, the CEO and Assistant Secretary General at UN Global Compact. You know, the recognition here is that, especially over the pandemic, we really got to see and experience the power of digital and the power of digital transformation. Many more people got onto e-commerce. People were able to study and learn. And we, you know, made huge advancements on issues such as healthcare. However, it must be acknowledged that in the same way that there was advancement, many others were locked out of the possibilities and the promise of the digital economy. Um, you know, Africa truly is a continent of disparity. We have the Silicon Savannah. Um, where there's huge innovation coming out from telecommunications and others. But at the same time, many millions are not connected to what could be, you know, a promise for a, a future that really helps advance, you know, economies, communities, and certainly the sustainable development goals. So really this piece about Africa being unstoppable also really brings a call to action about the need to accelerate digital connectivity, digital technology to help advance progress on the sustainable development goals. So, Ms. Sander, how do you think uh, the uptake of technology can accelerate growth, especially in line with the Sustainable Development Goals? Right, and I'll focus specifically on, on you know, mobile telephony, mobile, mobile technology here. Look, you know, we often think of the mobile phone as a device for communication, but certainly, you know, there's a lot more benefit that mobile connectivity brings. Um, financial inclusion is one. On the African continent, many people have been financially included through mobile money that is provided by, you know, multitude of, of mobile operators on the continent. Also, you know, issues such as education, you know, provision of information on agriculture, on health, um, on, on, as I said, education and learning content, smart metering, smart cities. We've all seen the transparency and efficiency that has been brought about by e-governance. You know, in certain economies, I know Kenya is one, we we'll also look at trading on the markets using the mobile phone. So really just recognizing that there's so many benefits that the uptake of technology can bring. You know, I recall a statistic from the past that many on the African continent will experience more technology through the mobile phone, not necessarily through the laptop. And I think it really just provides an immense gateway uh, for, for progress in very very many ways in terms of sustainable development. Indeed, and even as the future is digital, what role can the private sector players play when it comes to fast tracking this digital transformation at a time and space where continents are scrambling for resources for the, because of the current developments we are seeing across different markets? You know, Abby, I think like like all, you know, mega challenges here, we need a wide range of players at the table. Um, I think, first of all, governments need to provide that enabling environment, the, the policy, the regulation, the level playing field to allow companies, operators, investors to be able to get into the market and scale and, and, and take technology where it needs to go. Certainly private sector then has the opportunity to come in to compete uh, to innovate, to understand customers' needs, to partner in the right way such that we address issues such as last mile access. Uh, but most importantly, I think, is, you know, a couple of terms, affordability, accessibility, and just making sure that whatever solutions we provide are widespread and can be accessed from my grandmother to the village, in the village, to a high-level executive in the city. And I think that really is the, the beauty and the benefits of mobile technology. It really has the opportunity to unite countries, uh, both in its simplicity as well as in its the complexity of services that it offers. You know, there's a couple of reports that, you know, I'd like to cite, you know, the World Bank has had talked about the fact that achieving universal and good quality internet across Africa would require investments of upwards of $100 billion. Um, you know, part of that is core infrastructure as well as advancing broadband networks. So again, you know, if the private sector and, and providers of capital are able to look at this as a sustainable investment opportunity, there's huge returns to be reached by a continent that is then all digitally connected and using a much broader range of, of information services and communications uh, solutions. But just to stress, I mean, I think, you know, it's not something for the private sector to take on alone. You definitely need multiple actors within the private sector, but you need an enabling policy environment and a fair and level playing field to allow the private sector to then thrive. 
And uh, do you believe the governments have been creating a facilitative environment because the private sector for them to pump in resources, they need to be uh, ready to play environment? You know, I think it varies from, from country to country. I think I, I, it wouldn't be fair to, to give a broad assessment of the continent. But let me just say that we have seen huge advancements in, in technology and in innovation on the African continent um, in many ways. You know, not simply just mobile money, but more and more, uh, more, more, more people are able to get connected. Uh, you know, I think there may be questions around affordability, certainly on, on issues such as data. But we are moving in the right direction. Um, and I think that is really important. And uh, looking at the bigger picture, you did, uh, of course, touch on the Africa Business Coalition. And what does the UN Global Compact focus on in Africa? Right. So um, just about two years ago, uh, well, a year and a half ago, 2021, we launched a strategy for Africa. And it really reflects the Global Compact's global uh, strategy, which looks at really using a set of business principles to make businesses more competitive, more resilient and more sustainable. Um, you know, the African continent, like all other continents, is heavily driven by the SME sector. But at the same time, I think some of the unique opportunities that make Africa unstoppable for us really provide the, the, the need and the impetus to talk about how businesses need to embrace you know, principles around sustainability, around understanding the importance of, of business competitiveness, and also seeking to build more coherence within the SME sector so that it can truly leverage its potential. The African continent has that 1.3 billion people in a market estimated at you know, trillions of dollars. And we hope that over time as the Global Compact, we'll be able to recruit more and more companies to join our movement, which is a cohort of responsible business leaders and companies that are first of all committed to business with purpose, businesses that is competitive, resilient, and sustainable, but also business that contributes to the sustainable development goals. So the Africa Business Leaders Coalition that you mentioned is a group of leading uh, businessmen from around the continent, businessmen and women from around the African continent, who are look, really looking to galvanize momentum so that businesses can focus on issues that are really pressing for the continent. This year, for example, they are building a coalition around climate and climate action in advance of the COP27 uh, conference in, in Sharm el-Sheikh in November this year to really make a strong call to action for what private sector in Africa must do, but also what it must ask for uh, in terms of the world to enable the African private sector to grow amidst this threatening climate crisis.